Good morning one and all. Welcome to my channel. My today's video is on poem 7 of standard 10th The Stolen Boat written by William Wordsworth. The earlier poem we had written by William Shakespeare. Sonnet 73. Now we have The Stolen Boat written by William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth is considered as one of the greatest poets of English literature. He has shared his experience of his early boyhood days in this poem, The Stolen Boat. He has shared about his own experience. If you see the pre-reading activity, imagine you are a child who has been caught stealing a pen. What would you do as a headmaster? What would you do as a child? Yes, we all know as a headmaster, surely one would make the child understand that stealing is wrong and the, as a child and as a child we all know likely to do this mistake even when I and you were small we must have done this act of stealth the headmaster will tell you should not steal stealing a pen is wrong he makes the child understand and then um, the child will surely agree to it but as a child it is likely that such acts do take place do you remember your childhood days your days in the nursery your days in the LKG, UKG, do you remember? One or the other day you must have brought a doll home. You must have brought a pencil home from somebody's compass. Right? Just go back to your nursery days. Childhood days, you must have done this. But your mother knows very well what to do. She must have taken that doll, she must have taken that compass box or that pencil. The very next day she must have come to your school, she must have spoken to the teacher and given it back. Yes, I, rem I can see all that each and every one of you must have done this. Because as a child you get attracted by the doll, by the pencil, by the compass box. So likely to do such things. Such incidents happen in our lives. Here in this poem also, William Wordsworth, in his early childhood days, in his early boyhood days, he has, he had stolen a boat. For what? Simply for a jolly ride. He, he had stolen a boat simply for his jolly ride. And later he realizes that what he has done is wrong. It is an act of stealth. When he understands that it is an act of stealth, he returned the he returns the boat back. But the guilt in him troubled him for many days that he had stolen a boat, he had taken a boat without anyone's permission. He had taken a boat without a anybody's permission and that it was an act of stealth. So let's start the poem. One summer evening led by her I found a little boat tied to a willow tree. Within a rocky cave its usual home straight I unloosened her chain and stepping in pushed from the shore it was an act of stealth and troubled pleasure nor without the voice of mountains echoes that did my boat move on leaving behind her still on either side small circles glittering idly in the moon until they melted all into one track of sparkling light but now like one who rose 
proud of his skills to reach a chosen point with an answering line i fixed my view with an answering line i fixed my view so coming to the explanation of these lines here the poet sees about tied to a willow tree a willow tree is a tree that grows near the water uh, with a thin flexible branches so it's a willow tree a boat was tied to this willow tree in the rocky caves the caves are said to be its home as it was summer evening he wanted to have a ride in the boat he unloosened the chain pushed the boat in the water and began to ride the poem poet must have gone there he saw the boat tied to the willow tree he saw here and there nobody there to ask to take permission he wanted to go on a jolly ride he must have unloosened the chain of the boat and then he had he must have taken the boat began to ride but of course it is an act of stealth earlier when he did also it was an act of stealth it is not that then it was an act of stealth and now it is not stealing is an act of stealth itself earlier also now also of course it was an act of stealth because he had taken the boat from there without anyone's permission the poet found pleasure within himself but this was a trouble because he had done wrong by stealing a boat so his joy and thrill of adventure was distracted by the act of guilt the poet says that there was complete silence he had guilt within him that he has he has stolen something so that makes him fear first and then he feels there is silence everywhere but in the silence he could feel the mountains echoed it is his fear which is making him feel this he feels that the mountains echoed he moved on with his boat he rowed his boat rowing the boat in the waters he rowed the boat in the waters of the lake he rowed straight leaving behind the water in small circles he could see the glittering of the waters in the moonlight but he ignored all the things he had fixed his view and wanted to reach there at that point without getting disturbed by the other things coming to the next part of the poem upon the summit of a craggy ridge the horizon's utmost boundary far above was nothing but the stars and the gray sky she was an elfin penis lustily i dipped my oars into the silent lake and as i raced upon the stroke my boat went having through the waters like a swan when from behind that craggy steep till then the horizons bond a huge peak black and huge as if with voluntary power and sting up roared its head i struck and struck again and growing still in stature the grim shape towered up between me and the stars and still and measure for so it seemed with purpose of its own and measured motion like a living thing strode after me with trembling oars i turned here the poet says that as he rode the boat he could only see the craggy ridge far away there was nothing except the stars and the green sky he kept his path straight 
and kept rowing the boat he kept on rowing the boat in the waters of the lake the poet calls his boat an elfin pinnace and compares it to a swan he says that he dipped the oars into the silent lake and kept rowing he says that he rowed in his boat leaving the waters like a swan he com- he continued to row until the craggy steep appeared to grow larger in size it is his imagination he feels that the craggy ridge the steep peak is becoming bigger and bigger and the towering height of the peak seemed to stand between the poet and the stars as and when he takes the he unloosens the boat he starts rowing in the waters he comes forward and then he feels that he has to go and reach that craggy reef there the steep the steep mountain there he has to reach that big rock which was there he was only seeing that big rock his intention was to row till there but as and when he moved towards that rock that peak the huge peak he feels that it is becoming bigger and bigger it is his imagination because the fear is there in him that he has stolen the boat it seemed to the poet that the peak was a living creature following him with regular step with regular steps it is following him but no nothing is following him there is nothing that is echoing because it is an unusual place it is a lonely place the next part of the poem and through the silent water stole my way back to the covert of a willow tree there in a mooring place i left my bark and through the meadows whom world went in grave and serious mood but after i had seen that spectacle for many days my brain worked with a dim and undetermined sense of unknown modes of being over my thoughts there hung a darkness call it solitude or blank desertion no familiar shapes remained no pleasant images of trees of sea or sky no colors of the green field but huge and mighty forms that do not live like living men moved slowly through the mind by day and were a trouble to my dreams coming to the explanation part of this part of the poem when the poet feels that the peak is growing larger in size and seem to follow him he decides to row back leave the boat from where he had taken it its earlier place that is a willow tree it was tied to a willow tree in a rocky cave so he decides that he has to go back and leave it there he leaves the boat back near the willow tree so he rows back he leaves the boat from where he had unloosened it near the willow tree and uh, goes back to his home in a serious and thoughtful mood through the grassy fields that is the green fields on the way he finds the green fields and he returns through these green fields home but there is one thought in his mind what that is the act of guilt the act of stealth he there is a guilt in him the poet says that he feels lonely and devoid of thought whenever he remembers it so the poet always remembers that he has done something wrong so he feels lonely at that time he says no familiar shapes remained there were no pleasant thoughts no images of tree sky sea nothing at all no color of the green fields he could not remember anything what he could remember he could only feel the huge and mighty forms those big mountains which were there those actually did not live they had no life in them but the poet felt that those were following him those were echoing and those were growing in size he felt in his dreams the mighty forms still followed him the mysterious shapes and images haunted him the poet says that it was because he was guilty 
he had stolen a boat according to the poet nature is a moral guide that corrects our mistakes inspire us to do good things nature will not leave us until and unless we correct our mistake we realize it we will be punished by nature if we do anything wrong we all know that the ecological balance you know that nature has to be balanced otherwise nature will show its angriness in one or the other way hope you all have understood the summary of the poem hope you have liked my video coming to the examination point of view summary of the poem stolen boat will be asked what does her refer to in the poem of course her is the boat where was the boat moved the boat was moved to a willow tree within a rocky cave what does the home refer to home refers to the usual place where the boat was tied what still the act does the boy commit the poet as a boy in his boyhood days what is the still the act he commits how many peaks are mentioned in the poem of course two peaks are mentioned the black huge peak is the the black peak is said to be the huge one big one what is boat compared to to a swan boat is compared to a swan here trembling oars is a personification she was an elfin panace is a personification but if only elfin panace is given children only if elfin panace is given then it becomes a metaphor not a personification if the whole sentence she was an elfin panace is given then it becomes a personification elfin means a small panace means boat a small boat elfin panace this is referred to as swan so these are the questions likely to appear in the examination if you know the summary of this poem easily you can attempt the questions you can write all the answers hope you have liked my video hope you have understood the summary of the poem if you find this video of mine useful to you then what you have to do you have to like share subscribe your comments are always awaited Thank you